Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, uh, in the live stream that we did a few days ago, there was interest expressed in me doing a video on slow scan television. And as you saw from the opening title there, well, that's what we're doing today. So slow scan TV is exactly what it sounds like. It's slow scan, meaning that they're scanning it down really slow. Uh, a normal um, analog television signal would scan really fast drawing um, 60 fields per second and those fields being interlaced meaning that uh, one field another field would like that and they would uh, draw one field and then draw the other field uh, making a full frame every 29 point something 29.97 or something like that um, frame, uh, feel, uh, frames per second, close to 30. You know, you could say 30 frames per second rounded up, but it's actually just a little bit less. Uh, and that's regular television. Tele, meaning audio, of course, because you've got audio and video. Slow scan TV, yeah, they could leave the tele off and just call it slow scan V. Um, <laughs> because there's no audio subcarrier, it's just sending images. And uh, slow scan TV is kind of an extension of facsimile, or fax, uh, if you really want to think about it. The uh, two modes share a lot of the same DNA, and that they're using audio tones to transmit an image. Early fax machines used rotating drums. A piece of paper would be affixed around the drum with the image to be sent, and on the receiving side, special paper that could be marked by an electric current would be affixed around the roller. The rotation of the two drums would be synchronized between the two machines, so they were rotating at exactly the same speed. And then on the scanning side, or the sending side, a photosensitive piece of electronics would sense whether the paper got dark or light as the drum rotated. And an audio tone would be produced, the intensity of the tone indicating how dark the uh, sensed line was. On the receiving side, then, the uh, audio tone would be reversed back to marks on the paper by burning the paper and the uh, more intense the audio tone was the darker the burn would be and that was how facsimile sent images using audio tones somewhere in the 1940s or 50s somebody figured out that the long persistent CRTs that were used in radar screens uh, where the uh, the image that's drawn on the screen fades out slowly, that those screens could be used to do the same thing, drawing an image from the top down, line by line, just like a fax machine on a rotating drum, except that the image would then be drawn to a CRT and slow scan TV was born. In this example to the lower right, you can see where a slow scan TV image is being drawn on a long persistent phosphor CRT like would be used for radar and you can see how the image is faded out towards the top as the uh, phosphor degrades but the persistence was long enough that you could see the image and this was exactly what early slow scan TV experiments were so as you can see early facsimile experiments led to 
transmission of still video images by ham radio operators across the airwaves, uh, and slow scan TV was born. Now, um, as with the early fax machines, the sending and receiving units have to be in sync with each other. They have to be starting and ending each line at exactly the same time. If they don't, uh, then the receiving unit will start drawing the lines maybe a tiny bit early or a tiny bit late, and each progressive line will shift, and you'll end up with a slant to the resulting image. Most slow scan TV will, software will have a slant control that allows you to correct for that on the receiving end as you're receiving the images. And indeed, a lot of software does, does it automatically. Most slow scan TV modes will have a sync pulse at the beginning of each line, a tick that you'll hear um, at the beginning of each line. And the software can use that then to make sure that the lines are in sync and drawn to create a, a straight image. Now, early slow scan TV modes were all black and white. Um, as you could see, they, they used green screen phosphor CRTs, so there was no color as an option. Uh, and the uh, intensity of the line was varying via the audio tone, but no color information. So it was simply a black and white image. Uh, as computers came into being with slow scan TV and more uh, control and functionality was possible, they figured out ways of doing color images. And the way that they would do a color image is they would simply do three tone sweeps per line uh, really quick. Uh, one for red, one for green, one for blue. Or if they wanted to use the uh, other color model, one for yellow, one for magenta, one for cyan, and then maybe one for um, black, perhaps, if they really wanted to mix it. I don't know. There's so many different modes that have been developed now for slow scan TV, uh, dozens of them. Uh, if you look at a web page, the list of modes, it's just an extensive list. Uh, everybody's come up with new ways of doing it and uh, different ways of moving the image across. But primarily, they all use a sweeping audio tone as you're scanning across the line to denote the intensity. There is one standout, though, um, developed for the Amiga computer back in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and it's a mode called ATV, which uh, Amiga Television, I don't know exactly what it stands for, but it was designed on the Amiga computers and it used um, a, a more organized digital chunk method of sending data. So you ended up with a good image every time without any of the timing issues or slant. Uh, they were basically encoding uh, the digital data of the image and sending that across. So. Uh, trellis coding or something. It's, it's similar to the way modems were used to send digital information across phone lines, except they did it across the, uh, across the airwaves. So that's the only mode that's different in methodology, but um, the rest of the slow scan modes still pretty much work the same. So what about software to allow you to experiment with slow scan TV? Well, there's free software out there. I'm going to talk about two packages real quick. On the Windows side of things, there's a program called MMSSTV. It's freely available, and the link will be down in the description. Uh, it does most of the slow scan TV modes uh, for Windows just fine. Uh, lets you compose uh, images as far as adding text uh, within the program, and uh, transmit and receive and maintain a gallery of images. Uh, under Linux, a free program that's available is called QSSTV. And again, it does all the different slow scan modes just fine, allows you to do some basic image composition stuff. Uh, but it also does a DRM, Digital Radio Mondale uh, images, which is a newer, um, heavily digital format, and a hybrid of that that allows you to use the internet to FTP the images after establishing the connection over the radio. But that's uh, a subject for a whole different video. As far as slow scan TV, though, uh, it works just fine. I'm not 100% certain at the time of recording this, but I think for the Mac there might be a version of QSS TV uh, cross-compiled. If not, I'm certain that there are uh, some free slow scan TV apps for the Mac out there. Perhaps somebody will leave one in the comments below, and I will uh, pin it to the top for those of you looking for software. So that's slow scan TV in a nutshell. Uh, it's pretty neat. I uh, sometimes enjoy just leaving the software running on one of the common frequencies. 
Uh, there is a website that lists uh, all the common frequencies. I'll put that in the description below as well. Uh, but the two most often used are going to be on 20 meters and 40 meters. And on 20 meters, you'll usually find slow scan um, analog on 14.230, and the DRM stuff tends to show up on 14.233. Uh, 40 meters, uh, sometimes you'll hear slow scan TV on uh, 7.171. Um, is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, 7171 um, is where you'll find slow scan TV on 40 meters, uh, usually in the evenings. But 20 meters is by far the most busy. Um, if you can tune to 14230 most days and find some slow scan TV activity. so. Get on there, play around with it. You can use any digital interface like you would use with any other digital mode, um, RIDI, uh, FT8, whatever. Signal Links, uh, my own Duino Box, um, Rig Blaster, any of those will work just fine. It's a regular audio mode. Um, get on there, play around with it. Have fun with it. Uh, it's kind of neat being able to send images uh, across the air, even though it's kind of old hat these days, it's still kind of neat. <laughs> Um, I'll close this video out with a uh, live demonstration. We'll point the camera at the radio and find somebody sending uh, an image and let you, uh, let you watch that build in real time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.